What is up YouTube and welcome back to Bike Hub Japan. So today's topic is basically about life in Japan because about a week ago I got a comment on one, one of my videos by a guy called Mason Van Bike or Mason Von Bike um, saying how did you get that job? Um, I'm pretty sure I've covered that in another video but on the same day as well somebody else commented like um, what made you move to Japan or what made you decide to move to Japan so I figured I would do uh, a little talk video about that today because it's perfect timing because my visa my Japan my visa like my work permit expires this week so I've got to go to the immigration office and um, do uh, the extension paperwork now before um, I used to have a three-year visa so um, the procedure and stuff is just like you know you only have to do it once every three years or whatever that's not the same for everyone but I obviously I, I can't remember that was so long ago I couldn't remember what stuff I needed and do I need some documents from the city hall and stuff like that so I called the um, visa helpline this morning it took about half an hour to get through and then when I eventually did get through I explained the situation obviously in Japanese I was like right I need to get um, my visa renewed today so what documents do I need and lo and behold useless pricks couldn't give me any proper advice basically just said uh, I think and uh, yeah that should be okay is basically all they told me so yeah good job helpline really fucking helpful but um, yeah it is it's a ball lake um, basically this morning I had to get up and go to the city hall or no I should say the town hall to get a um, it's called a Juminho which is basically like a oh yeah just go through the red bro don't worry about it but it's basically just like a proof of address it proves that you actually have an address in Japan and shows where you live and shows the other people that you live with um, so I got that then I had to I was on my bicycle so I cycled really quickly to the local supermarket which has got a photo booth so I got my photo taken then I had to search around all my stuff at home to find my wage slips um, and then the most important thing this time for me uh, because I was a naughty boy last year um, I need a sponsor so I need a Japanese national to sponsor me and uh, yeah luckily my boss agreed to it but when I handed him the, the paperwork to sign he was kind of like oh shit what am I getting myself into kind of thing because <laughs> it says in the small print um, the person who signs this letter now agrees to be the sponsor of the applicant now that entails making sure that this person adheres to Japanese rules and laws uh, the second one was if this person has to leave Japan um, or you know like is forced to leave Japan like deported for example I agree to pay the transportation costs for this person oh, you know these traffic lights are not in my favor today and the third one what was the third one I oh, yeah just like I I agree to um, financially assist this person while he's staying in Japan so obviously he's my boss so he pays my wages so that one was totally cool but the other ones like yeah adhere to the Japanese laws he was kind of shitting he was like what happens if you like you, you get in trouble again I'm like, ah, don't worry I'll, I won't ask you for help it's all good it's just a piece of paper just just sign it bro just sign it and eventually he did anyway so that was that was lucky but uh, yeah so now I've got all my shit in order I've got to go to the immigration office which is a proper dive of place. Like, it's not a dive as in like it's old and shit, it's just the atmosphere in there is just horrible. It's, um, you know sometimes you see people who um, get their visas denied you know like and you, can see, you see them like leaving in tears and realizing that their dreams of living in Japan are over and they've got to move back to wherever they came from and stuff so it's kind of a sad place other times you see you know people coming out who've just got their permanent residence and stuff and they're all happy and smiling and their family are there and they're all taking pictures and stuff so it, you know it, it's a happy and a sad place but I just really hate going there because it's just I don't know there's something about the place the vibes bad vibes man something like that anyway so yeah it's about another half an hour away from here so I'll uh, once we get moving again I'll start telling you about why I came to Japan in the first place and uh, I think I've touched on how I got my job so Mason 
Mason Van Bike. I'm pretty sure I discuss that in another video. So if you have a look for that one, or I'll put the link there somewhere. Alrighty then, so what brought me to Japan in the first place? Um, yeah, so I've been in this country for 12 years and I've come up to 13, I guess. And the very first time I came here, I think it was in the year 2000, I came here to a uh, to the Tokyo Auto Salon, which is a, a big a big show in Tokyo. So I came to came to that just to look at the new new models of cars and stuff like that. And yeah, I think but before that, I'd already been pretty much obsessed with Japan from like quite a young age, to be honest. It's kind of funny, but my mum even used to call me TJ San. So she used to call me Sam, like Mr. or Sir, even though, you know, we had no, no sort of uh, exposure to Japanese culture or whatever, because I used to talk about it all the time, even when I was really, really small, um, it was kind of like an in-joke in, in my house to call me Sam. So, TJ Sam, yes mum. And then when I was like, I don't know, 18 or something, I told my mum that I was going to move to Japan and she was kind of, she said like, Oh, I'm not really surprised. So yeah, from a really young age I've been sort of obsessed with the country and that's what brought me here. But the funny thing is now I'm here, the like the what people come to Japan for to do touristy stuff, you know, like all the Japanese culture. It does doesn't interest me at all anymore. So it's like I've become just Japanese now, like all I do is go to work really and you know, obviously I can speak Japanese pretty damn well. Can't write very well, but I can read a decent amount. So yeah, I, I think like the honeymoon period of where it was all like fun and a new experience is like long gone. That's like finished a long time ago. So now it's just like it could be anywhere, you know. It doesn't really matter to me that I'm in Japan. I could be living in Europe for for all it all it matters, you know. Like because all you do is go to work and pay taxes and all that stuff. So yeah, it's a lot. It's magic for me in some ways, and uh, just the the amount of bureaucracy and all the the stupid <coughs> excuse me, all the stupid stuff that goes on in this country. Like all the, their their attitude to, to work is just bullshit. You know, like you're basically slaves. Um, so yeah, a lot of the stuff I'm not really keen on anymore. But it doesn't sort of make me want to leave because it's like uh, it's pretty much just my home now anyway. I think like once you've lived somewhere for so long it's pretty hard to leave but um, yeah basically I'm not really interested in leaving because the country itself is just awesome the trouble with it is there's too many dickheads here and what I mean by dickheads is like people in power and uh, people with money there's far too much money in this country in the wrong hands <coughs> excuse me I've got the Rona hope not he let me go past ah uh, bollocks so um yeah one thing that i was that really blew me away when i first came here was this is i think the third largest city in japan so it's not tokyo but every single day i will see a bunch of ferraris a bunch of lamborghinis a bunch of super expensive um mercedes g wagons don't know why they're so popular but they are and you know it, there's so there's tons of money here like where i live there's loads of people with porsches and there's, there's a ferrari that's just parked on the street for god's sake a 458 italia in yellow that's just parked in um like coin parking every day you know the ones where you put you reverse in and then a the flap comes up so that you can't get out without paying and like a low car like that is it probably hits the flap every single time because they're not designed for sports cars but yeah there's just money and they're, they're really flippant about it it's like um in england we say like nouveau riche although that is french um you know like new money it's like there's so much new money here so it's like they're they're rich but they're kind of arrogant pricks about it you know like they're, they're all show-offs like look at me i've got loads of money so i'm gonna go out and buy um you know like a, a two thousand dollar wallet just because i can and then they're gonna like rub it in your face even though you know like even my boss does that my boss has got a lamborghini <coughs> excuse me and uh yeah so he's got a lamborghini a g-wagon a three million dollar house and all this sort of stuff but you know what i get paid 
he, if I moaned about my salary, he would like, he would like, well, what's wrong with that? That's good money. Like, yeah, well, it's not good money, is it? Because I can't afford a Lamborghini or a three million dollar house. But they just don't sort of see that the worker needs needs money as well. They're just like happy to give you the minimum wage, and then that's the end of it, kind of thing. <clears throat> so that kind of things is kind of frustrating, like how Japan treats people really how how the bosses treat people is is really bad now almost everybody i know here even people that work in english jobs they're all like just they're becoming like brain dead because they just you don't get enough time off work and they just they work that they work your ass off like i obviously i only get mondays off so basically i work six days a week and then twice a month I get a Monday and a Tuesday off. So let's see, what's that for? So do I get, I think I only get, yeah, eight, eight days, no. For, I think I only get six days off a month. Like that's just ridiculous, right? <coughs> that is absolutely ridiculous. And um, the money's not great, like compared to what I would earn back home, I think it's a low salary. But for here, it's considered to be a good salary, but it's just, it's bullshit really. So, anyone who wants to come to Japan, I would, I would recommend it, but I would say don't start thinking about, oh, I'm going to move here for good, or I'm going to make a career in Japan, because I know so many people who have got um, real good skill sets back home, and then they've come to Japan thinking that they, they'd make it, make a, you know, a nice, a nice career and they'd be able to translate their working skills to any country. But it just doesn't work here. You're always going to be the foreigner and you're always going to be treated differently and paid less and not given the same responsibility and all that sort of stuff. So it's kind of, kind of shitty if, you, if you're really thinking about long term, like people like me who've got families and stuff. Um, but I would definitely say for for those people out there who are interested in uh, Japanese culture and that you want to come and try it out, just do it for a year. Get yourself a working holiday visa and just get a teaching job for a while um, and then go travelling. That's definitely the best way. Like you, do, you just don't want to get stuck sucked into the system like me and be a fucking wage slave because you'll you'll regret it. <laughs> um, yeah, the other, thing, the other bad thing about it is, I'm, let me just get the bad shit out of the way first, okay? So the other bad thing about it is, there's no, <coughs> um, well, number one, there's not, not enough freedom, personal freedom and personal space. And the other thing is, everybody lives in apartments, so when you've got a hobby, uh, you know, like, even just, just say bikes is your hobby, it's really hard to, to even go somewhere, to find somewhere to, to move your chain or to wash your bike because if you do it in your apartment some fucker will complain and you know you'll get a letter saying you're not allowed to do <coughs> fuck you know you're not allowed to do maintenance in the um, parking garage or you know something like that so that is um, one of the things that is a total mindfuck for me because I was I grew up in the countryside and having space was just like you know it was I took that for granted of course I've got space of course I've got a massive garden of course I've got a garage of course I've got all my mates garages where we can all hang out together and fix bikes and do all that 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 just doesn't happen here and to integrate into Japanese society is so hard because like I just mentioned before you are always seen as the outsider as the foreigner so it's hard to get real good friends with Japanese people uh, in my case my Japanese friends are um, the friends that I first met when I came to Japan, like all that all that time ago, like 12 years ago, and we're still I'm still friends with them. Um, but a lot of those people as well were like just drinking friends. So like I previously talked about, I've quit drinking. So because I don't go out to bars and stuff anymore, I don't see a lot of my old friends, and they just don't bother contacting me anymore. So that, I contact them and they reply. They're like, Hey, do you want to go out a drink? No, I'm still off the piss. Okay, that's like pretty much the end of the conversation. So I mean if you're a drinking guy it's probably easy to make loads of friends and it's easy to get laid, no problem there. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, to actually in get yourself integrated into society and for, that, for the people to consider you just as, you know, you're one of the, their neighbours, you're the, 
you're the foreign guy that works as this and you're a good guy or whatever they always sort of seem to look at you with a, with a bit of an eye of suspicion and even though you know I can be in the park playing with my kid who is pretty obvious that she's like half half Japanese half English she's got a bit of an oriental look about her people will still say to me so when are you going back home I'm like what do you mean go back where when are you going back to your country it's like it's, it's sort of taken for granted that you are just a temporary visitor here that you will be leaving at some point and then people try and speak to my daughter in English and she's like oh, I don't want to speak English you know, she just goes to a regular Japanese school and whatnot so she doesn't want to speak English and they're like, they're like taking it back by that <laughs> she goes to a normal Japanese school but how does she speak Japanese but um, because her mum's Japanese she was born in Japan and now she's six so she's you know reading, reading books for three years been going to school for three years what do you think man so it's like <coughs> what the fuck is wrong with me today I hope I haven't got corona so yeah th there's stuff like that that just gets on your tits and it's not a fun experience like before um, I came here I never um, I've never experienced racism I suppose you could say like um, my school was pretty multicultural there was all sorts of like different different races in there we had a load of Chinese kids some Indian kids a couple of like black kids and it was just normal to me it never seemed like um, you know something out of the ordinary so I, I had all sorts of different cultural different friends of different cultures when I was little and it's so it just never really it didn't really dawn on me except you know aside the color of skin that we were different um, but here you you feel like racism almost instantly like um, people on the train will be like pointing at you and talking about you and stuff and and they assume that you can't speak Japanese so they'll just say it blatantly out loud like they'll say in Japanese like look at that guy that foreign guy he's got a massive nose hasn't he and they'll, they'll, they'll giggle like yeah, yeah all foreigners have got big noises <laughs> and then you can just like walk up to them and go I can speak Japanese I know what you're saying and then they're just like oh! and they, they just turn away and pretend like nothing's ever happened so yeah for the first time in my life life I guess about say like 12 years ago I experienced racism like towards me and it just like blew my mind that people were still so close-minded like that I suppose I shouldn't have been surprised because Japan is kind of a strange country like that it's a bit backwards but um, yeah so anyway this is the immigration center here you see that sign over there that says immigration so that's Bill in the third floor up there is a jail <laughs> and the second floor is where I'm going today that's a jail oh my bike smells pretty hot so yeah let's get this visa shit done and uh, well uh, I'll speak to you when I'm finished you must I haven't got front indicators Right next to the fire hydrant. As soon as my bike smells hot. Kill condera. Yeah, then. Alright, so that was very, very painless. I got in and out of the immigration within half an hour, which is very, very rare. I got there just before lunch and I figured I wasn't going to get out till like 3 or 4 but yeah, just handed over the documents there was some stuff that I had missing which I sort of knew already which was the um, uh, tax document but I gave them instead my uh, last three months pay slips so I hope it's okay but they basically said to me if, they, um, if there's anything else that they need they'll write me a letter and I can send it in the post to them so a very successful day so I'm going to head home now and uh, do some exciting housework. But um, yeah, to continue with where I left off, like saying about how this country is a racist country and stuff, it is, but you sort of get used to it and it's not like such a big deal in the end. Like, you know, when the whole country is, um, you know, reasonably short and black hair, black eyes, you know, if you're a big tall foreigner with what, with blue eyes and brown hair or blonde hair or whatever, obviously you're going to stand out. So it sort of stands to reason that they're going to, you know, like look at you. It's just that I wish they had a bit more, mm, what's the word, 
a bit more sense maybe like they shouldn't just assume that you're a dumbass who doesn't speak the language and that they can just say whatever they want you know about you to your face so yeah that, that kind of drags on you a bit that gets on your nerves to, to some extent but yeah like I said I'm sort of used to that now but um, anyway so I've been pretty negative I guess so what are the good sides about living in Japan well there are loads of good sides obviously the country itself is a beautiful country it's safe like i can just leave my keys in my bike while i go into a convenience store to buy coffee or whatever the roads are fantastic the police are pretty much you know they're kind of lenient towards bikes and stuff i've got loads of tickets over the years but if i was in england pulling wheelies everywhere and breaking the speed limit like a lunatic then i would i would have been caught on so many cameras but the cameras here are sort of few and far between if you stick to the country roads and stuff then you can pretty much just you know ride however you want without worrying too much so for bikes and for cars it's great there's plenty of places where people go at night time to do practice like um practicing knee down or if you're into cars practicing drifting or whatever now obviously as um, i've shown you guys recently the circuits here loads of circuits but the only downside is they're all pretty small uh, but yeah the fact that you can just turn up on your day off without any forward planning and ride is is obviously a, a big bonus um, now where i've been negative towards the people like obviously that's mainly i'm talking about work you know the work culture is is so shit but you know when you're young and free and single going out to bars and stuff like you meet so many cool people and cool cool chicks so that's why i would recommend anyone who's got an interest in the culture just just to come and do it for a year and um make the most of the fun the fun bit because the fun bit is awesome it's only when you get stuck into um into jobs and paying bills and stuff that, that it becomes a drag but it's probably not a, it's not worse than most than other countries like there's not um load more tax in other countries or anything like that or uh you know you don't you don't feel like you're getting raped your wallet's getting raped every time every time you get paid so i think the tax i don't know exactly what percentage it is but like i remember in england when i was paying my uh you know income tax and then your na national health insurance and stuff it's roughly like a quarter of your salary is gone maybe so i think here it's a bit less than that but there's so many things that you need to keep on top of things like city tax and like uh health insurance and private health insurance and there's there's loads of stuff that that kind of add up now usually the company if you work for a good company they'll sort it all out for you but um for example last year i quit my job and then started my new job almost straight away i think uh i quit at the end of august and i started my new job on the beginning of um september but in that small period in between where i was technically unemployed i got roughly a thousand dollars worth of bills arrive at my house and um, when i said well, why do i have to pay this i've been fully employed up until now and my new employer says they're not paying it and my previous employer should, should pay it and they're like well you need to contact your old employer and tell them i was like yeah well, i did but they said no i have to pay it myself i said how can it cost a thousand bucks for a week and a half where i wasn't working like uh, that's bullshit and you know when you get in situations like that you just can't win they're, they're so well that's what it says in our rule book so that's what it is there's no sort of leeway and that kind of thing and all the procedures and stuff and the, the kind of stuff that you have to do just to just to clear yourself every month that gets gets annoying and it takes its toll on you so yeah basically if you're going to come and live here make sure you get a good job with a good company that sorts everything out for you so otherwise you'll just be ended up you'll end up having massive bills that you won't want to pay and then if you try and leave the country or something you'll be at the airport and they'll they'll, they'll say you, you haven't paid this you need to pay this so yeah you have to be you have to follow the rules here really that's the um that's what i would say you can't be like oh, I'm, I'm leaving soon so i'm, I'm not going to bother paying that you kind of got to pay it because they'll they'll find out one way or the other i know plenty of people who didn't pay but yeah they, they do end up getting caught so 
that's something to keep in mind but overall it's a fantastic country to live and as long as you can get your head around how different the culture is and you can get your head around uh, the language then I would yeah I would highly recommend it but maybe just don't don't turn into a lifer like me because you'll be you'll be crying you'll be crying by by the time you've been here for about five or six years <laughs> but no, i'm all used to it now so it doesn't really affect me the way it did at the first i've i've come to accept my fate now i suppose you could say but um yeah so that that's pretty much that's pretty much all i've got to say on the subject so if you're thinking of getting your ass out to japan then i would say do it don't um don't be put off by all the horror stories just freaking freaking do it get out and see the world people right that's all i gotta to say today i'm all out of I'm all out of words so i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye for now <laughs>